Hi, I'm Ryan. Today, we're gonna hack the PlayStation 5 controller. And normally in my videos, this is where I list out all the steps to do it, but this one's a little different. If you just want the code in the description to work, that's part one. And if you wanna stick around and hack it yourself and see how I wrote the code, that's part two. And I'll even show you how a double tap on the touchpad has become an emergency shutoff in the code for myself. Let's jump over to the Raspberry Pi and get started. First, I wanna make sure we're on the same page. So I'm gonna open my terminal and type sudo app install code. That'll give me Visual Studio code. And now I'll make sure I'm in my home directory, so cd tilde, and I'll type code space period. And that's so I can show you my .bashrc file. I've added two aliases. So when I type Python, it executes Python 3. And when I type pip, it executes pip 3. I also added one more. So alias ll is the full ls space minus al command. I'll turn auto save on, and then my changes are saved. And I'll close my terminal, open a new one. This is so your changes in bash RC will be recognized in your terminal. And I'll install the one library we need, pip install ev dev. The next thing to do is connect the PlayStation 5 controller. And before we do that, I'm gonna go over to cd slash dev slash input, and I'll type ll to see all of the inputs on my Raspberry Pi right now. So I have events zero through four and a mouse. Now I'm making this easy on myself and I'm gonna connect manually. I'll go over to Bluetooth, add device, and on the PlayStation 5 controller, I'll click on share and the PS button. I'll hold them down for about four seconds and it'll start strobing. And this can take about 30 seconds to show up on the Raspberry Pi, but when it does, you'll see wireless controller and pair. This often fails and you have to go through this step a few times. Okay, now I'm connected. Back on dev input, I'll type LL again, and I can see that we have event five now and JS zero, which means joystick zero. This event five is what's gonna let us connect to the Bluetooth communications on our PS5 controller. Now I'll launch Visual Studio Code with our code and I'll enter event five. I'll go back to the terminal, Python controller.py. And now there we have it. We have the joysticks moving around, all of the buttons are registering, and that's all you need. Now, if you wanna see how I wrote the code, let's run through it and we'll go through nice and quickly. So let's start from scratch. The first thing we'll do is we'll import our libraries. Then we'll add a variable for gamepad. That's what gets all of the event registry for our controller. And it's going to take what's otherwise very garbled commands and turn it into events and values. Then in main, we're just gonna print out the gamepad. So let's go see if this all works. And we do have the device name wireless controller. So we get gamepad and it crashes immediately. Let's do better than that. Okay, now we're gonna have an event registry loop. So for every event in the gamepad, we're just gonna print it out. And there we go. We can see that we have types, values, and codes. Now all we have to do is figure out slowly what every type, value, and code is. So there's two types of events we're gonna care about. That's everything other than the left pad being pressed. Then we're gonna print this out and we need to have a list of button presses. So square, circle, triangle, X, then your left pad, your right pad, L1, L2, R1, R2. L3, R3 is down on your joysticks. And the button values, simply a zero means up, a one means down. So if we run the code now and we're gonna stop printing every event, now we'll see triangle, circle, X, square, everything registers right except for the left pad. So those were EV keys. And now the left pad is in, in the EV dev library, it's called an absolute. So if the event type is an absolute, we just need to have a list of absolutes. So I've added the absolutes in and it's all the analogs and we have left pad up down values, left pad right left values. So I wanna print out what the joysticks are. In order to print it out nicely and in order to remove the drift from the center, I'm gonna create variables. So I remember what the left joystick position is and the right joystick, and then I can update and print out all four values at once. And with that, I have two functions to update my position for left joystick, right joystick. And the last piece I wanna add is I wanna remain blind if you're within six movements of center. So I don't wanna see drift. So center is, is 128, 128. So if I go three to the left, I won't notice. If I go three to the right, I won't notice. But we have 256 uh, values, so zero to 255. So we'll be blind at the very, very center. And that's okay, because the joysticks drift a little bit. So now what we get to see is when I move the joystick over, we just print out everything at once. And that's me moving the left joystick. Now, the very last piece is I want an emergency stop. Right now, it'll register that the touchpad is up and down. But if I click it twice in a second, this has to be an emergency stop for my robot. So I'll add in one more constant. So one second delay 
delay. After one second, it's not an emergency. And I need to track the emergency tap time. So the date time object of the last time that this button was pressed. Now I'll go back to the main event loop. And since this button is an EV code, inside of that if, I'll ask if it's an emergency and I just need to write that function. And when we jump in, we're gonna have access to the emergency tap time. So the last recorded time that the emergency tap button was pressed. And code 317, that is the code for the touchpad. And if the direction is down, then we're saying that the previous time is the last registered. The last registered time is right now. And if the difference of the two is less than the max delay, so one second, then yes, this is an emergency. Otherwise, no, there's been a long enough delay or it has never been pressed before and return false. So now when we run the code, there we go, emergency button. But if I go slow, one 1000, it's just another tap. So that's how you hack the PlayStation 5 controller. And if you make a fun project with yours, please come back and put it in the link below. I'd love to see what you're making. Thanks.